In terms of finding videos to use for your edit, there are a lot of different options. You can use the stock footage website. You can use YouTube if you'd like. Archive.org is another one of my favorites. For now, I think Pexels is pretty interesting. It's a fairly new website. They offer up some uh, royalty-free photos and video that you can use for your projects. It's kind of designed like a social network where different users can upload their own creations and they make them available for download for free. So what I want to do is go to videos and when we search for videos, we can use the keywords that we wrote down during our mindfulness exercise. So for example, let's look for, uh, I'm going to type in sunflower and we've got all these different videos of sunflowers that we use. When, when you mouse over, you can see that you get a little preview of the video and this is totally up to you which one that you want to use. There is no right or wrong answer. It all depends on what you think looks the best for your project. And I'm not going to think too hard about this. I kind of like this one here with the uh, white background that rotates and uh, it plays out here. You notice it has a free download button. I can click this little arrow next to the free download button and it will allow me to download this video in different sizes. If you notice this number here, 4096 by 2160, that is the pixel resolution of the video. So this is like a 4K video, it's pretty high resolution. Unless you're running a really fast machine, I wouldn't necessarily recommend editing in that resolution. So I'm going to go down here to a smaller resolution and I'm going to the smallest one I can find, 2048 by 1080, and click the free download button. I'm going to save this file. It's probably going to download to my downloads folder. I can see that this video is also uploaded by Cotton Bro. He's got a bunch of followers here. You can follow, you can donate, and tell them thank you for letting you use their video. Uh, so I'm going to type in another keyword here. I'm going to type in New York City. I've got a bunch of options here. Once again, I'm not going to think too hard about video that I want to use. I'm just going to look for what kind of looks interesting or what my idea of New York City would be. I like this black and white overhead shot. So I'm going to click that and this one has sound to it. That's fine. So if I download that, I can click the arrow. I can see that this is 1920 by 1080, which is high definition. They do have smaller options, but I'm going to download the 1920 by 1080. Click download and save the file. And then I'm going to go back to my search and I'm going to put in another keyword and I've been really interested in chameleons lately for some reason. These are some cool videos of a chameleon. I think I like this close up and their eyes are really cool. So I'm going to click that. I'm just going to download the 1920 by 1080 version and click. So here's my download folder. I just made a folder called videos and I'm going to copy these three videos that I downloaded from Pexels. I'm going to move them into that videos folder. Some of them are named, so that's aerial shot of city. For some reason, this sunflower is called production ID 42724, whatever. I'm going to rename that to sunflower. And the chameleon is the same video. I'm going to name that to, rename that to chameleon. Now I'm going to go back to DaVinci Resolve and go into my media pool. I can go to the file menu and import media. Um, now I'm going to navigate to my uh, downloads folder, the videos folder that I just found. And here are the three videos that I just downloaded from Pexels. I'm going to select all three and click open. This message here says the clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. That's fine for now. I'm just going to click don't change and these videos are going to load up. When you mouse over, you can see previews of your videos, and uh, you can also increase the size of the thumbnail image by pulling the slider back and forth. So I'm going to keep it big. And uh, let's start with placing some of these videos on the timeline. I don't really have an idea of what I want to do yet, but that's kind of the fun of it. Once I start to place these images, maybe I'll get inspired. Let's start with uh, the chameleon. When I double click the chameleon, it opens up into this preview monitor over here and then you'll notice it has a stop button, play button, fast forward all the way to the end and uh, go to the beginning. It also has a loop button here and some other uh, buttons that we'll get into later. But for now, the most important thing is you have the playhead which is like this white line 
and you can drag that along this line to preview the diff all the different frames of the video so you can go back and forth and so I really like the way that this chameleon's eyes uh, kind of look around so maybe I want to get I want to select a portion of this video right before the eyes start to move so maybe at this frame right here I want to hit the I key to set an endpoint and kind of move forward on the timeline by dragging the playhead and maybe like right here I'll press the O key to set an out point so what that did is it made a selection on that chameleon's video of the portion that I wanted to take so instead of using the whole video I decided I wanted just this point right before the eye started moving and then right when the eye looks back in the center so now I want to add this to my timeline if you look below you'll see what looks like a ruler so if I drag this clip if I pull from the image of the chameleon and drag it down onto my timeline you'll notice now like these two new layers popped up I'm gonna close the media pool just so I have some more space if I click it it'll collapse you notice I have an audio layer here and I have a video layer here this chameleon video did not have audio associated with it so there was no audio that that came in when I pulled it down and so in a video layer it's named video one you could rename it if you want to I'm gonna leave it alone you also have like this film reel icon if you click that what that does is it can turn that layer on and off this button can lock the layer if you don't want to change it if I wanted to add another clip say it's a sunflower sunflower kind of just rotates and I'm gonna just press the I key to uh, pick the end point and then uh, hit the O key to pick any out point and then I'm gonna drag that down onto my timeline right behind the chameleon layer so now what happens when I drag this playhead which is like this red line connected to this triangular shape I can drag that through time and I can see that at about four seconds and 23 frames right before five seconds the image will switch from the chameleon to the sunflower which is cool and so this is the very beginning of telling an abstract story so for this exercise I just want to select some different images and create a sequence out of it so I'm gonna go back up here to the New York City scene and I'm just gonna bring the whole thing down um, so I'm gonna drag it down and notice when I drag it I get an audio layer as well because it does have an audio track attached to it so when I play I can hear the audio there and so this is weird so what does a chameleon and a sunflower in New York have to do with each other nothing um, at this point but we can start to edit and just kind of have some fun with these images to see what happens so one thing I really like about the editing process is that you can do some really cool stuff I like to play around with time often I like to play around with uh, duplicating different scenes or copying different motions and just creating these experimental edits but the thing I like the most is when I uh, incorporate sound into an edit so I found a, a voice note that I had made it's kind of funny to me I'm gonna just drag that over into my media pool I think I was in the subway and uh, it's making this funny echo so that's kind of that'll be a funny backdrop for this video I can already tell that this is gonna get weird so the same way that I could choose the in and out points of video you can do the same thing with audio so if I pull the playhead back and forth I can see the waveform of the audio and kind of choose at what point I want to start okay so let's say I want it to start right at the beginning of one of my loops here I'm gonna get the I key and uh, you can see right there that's probably the end hit the O key to make it out point Okay, so right before my son starts talking, I will uh, take this clip and just drag it down to a new layer, to the audio 2. So now I'm going to go back 
hide the media pool again. And I'm gonna see what this sounds like with just these three images on the screen, so. So that is really, uh, it's already pretty weird. And I think I can I kind of edit this and change it into something. So maybe at the end of that, boop, 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 I want to change this image. So maybe I want to bring the sunflower in right at that point. I can just kind of lift it up into the video layer two, right to the beginning of that playhead. And now when I press play, and I want that to play right into the next kind of high note. So what you can do is, um, when you have a video clip on the timeline, when you put the mouse close to the edge of the clip, you notice that the icon will change from an arrow to what looks like a little bracket with, I don't know, like a column next to it. Well, when you see that, you can pull this back and forth. And what that will do is it'll shorten or lengthen the clip. So I'm gonna pull it, just to pull it right out to the playhead because I want the sunflower clip to show right until that next sound. So I can see the waveform here. That next sound is gonna start right here and I want that clip to end right there. So let's see what happens. Cool. So now I'm seeing black, there's nothing here because I just moved that sunflower from one place in time to another place in time. So instead of having uh, a black screen, I want maybe my aerial shot of New York to start right after the sunflower ends. So I'm gonna drag it here. And I'm going to go back to the beginning, press play. I'm kind of getting some new ideas for some of the images that I can bring in. So I love trains. So I'm going to look for a subway train. So right now it's showing me photos. Yeah, I can bring still photos in too, but I specifically want to use moving images for these film collages. So I'm going to click the videos option. I can see that there's 75 videos available for uh, Subway. That one looks cool. In my mind, I specifically want like a New York City subway. I don't know where these shots were taken. I don't really want people in my video right now. So I like this video of the train going by. I like this one. So I'm going to click it. And then I see the different size options. I'm going to hit that free download and uh, save the file. I'm going to go back over to DaVinci Resolve. It's my media pool. And I'm going to import media. And now I see this train named production ID. I'm just going to rename that train to make things easier. Open the train video, double click it. And now I can scrub through it to see all of the frames that make the train. So I want to choose the part of the train right before it goes all the way by. And I don't want this person in the frame. So I'm going to scrub forward. And scrubbing is just a term for dragging the playhead right at this point. I'm going to press the I key to set the end point. And then. Right about here, I'm going to press the O key to set the out point, and now I will bring, I can just drag this image, this video down. See, now I notice that it's coming in with an audio layer attached to it, um, so I don't want that to, to lay over my field recording that I brought in. So I'm going to bring it up to a higher layer so that the audio layer also goes below my audio. Hide the media pool again, and I'm going to play it back and see what it looks like. I feel like I need to add one or two more videos. Let me look up lightning. I think I like this one. Back to DaVinci, Media Pool, 
and you can also right click anywhere in the, in the media pool to um, import media or hit the control I key command I'm gonna click the lightning video and double click it to bring it into my preview monitor and uh, I like this point where the lightning kind of just strikes right there so I will press the I key scrub forward and I want it right until the lightning disappears I'm gonna press the O key um, and I don't know whether I want to use the audio or not so I'm just gonna bring it all in and see what happens so I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna when I bring it into video one I can see that it's gonna lay over the original overhead shot in New York here if I bring it into video two I see that the audio is gonna cover up my uh, field recording so I'm gonna drop it right here video three so that the audio does not cover up any part of my sequence here I'm gonna hide the media pool again go back to the beginning So I like it, it's getting weird. Um, I don't know the meaning of this yet, but um, I don't, the train is moving kind of slow for me. Uh, so one thing that you can do inside the software is that you can change the speed at which video plays. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to click on the clip in the timeline, or to right click on the clip on the timeline, and then go up to change clip speed and type in a number, or you can kind of drag this number and you notice the higher the number goes, the shorter the duration of the clip. So that means a higher percentage speed is going to make your video faster. It's going to happen in less time. So just to see what happens, I'm going to type in 500 and uh, click change. You notice the clip got a lot shorter there. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's a really fast train. I like that. I didn't want to see the platform. So right where the train is about to leave the frame, I'm going to click at the edge of this uh, video clip and kind of just pull that in so that now I'm cutting that video short before it gets to the, uh, before I can see the platform. Always make sure that you save because you never know with computers. Uh, what's going to happen. So save your project often, go to save project just so that if you lose power or something else happens that you don't lose some of these cool edits that you were making. I feel like I like the movement of this train but maybe I can duplicate it. So another cool thing that you can do is that you can click a video clip and if you hold down the alt key or if you're on a Mac I think it's the option key if you hold the alt key and pull it makes a copy you can make as many copies as you want all right so i just made a, like three extra copies of that train video now if i go back and play it i just made a, a train loop so it's like this never ending loop of the train that's kind of cool but what if i click this video um and i went to change clip speed and i reversed the speed. Notice these numbers now have negative numbers um, and I play it back. The train goes forward and backward but it's moving so fast you can hardly tell that that's what's happening. And by the way if you need some more space on your screen you can move your mouse right over this line that divides the preview monitor from your timeline and you notice your icon of your mouse arrow will change down that means that you can resize the different windows so I'm going to resize it up I'm also going to do the same thing and pull this audio layer down so that I can see more video layers um, and then I want to take this lightning video and I want to make a copy of it so how am I going to do that I'm going to click it hold the alt key and pull it up and I'm going to want to, the copy to come right after the end of the first video so it's kind of like that lightning repeats. It plays once and then it plays again. 
what I want it to do, I want to play it backwards. So I'm going to right click, change clip speed, reverse the speed, hit change. So now the lightning should play forward and then backwards. I think I want to bring the chameleon back into this. So I noticed that uh, the sunflower layer covers up the chameleon layer. Uh, so right at two seconds and 20 frames is when the sunflower first appears. But I have all of this chameleon footage um, that's being covered up. I can go into my toolbar up here and I can use this blade tool to come down here and cut the chameleon footage right at the playhead. And if I click, it'll look, cut that chameleon layer in half. Then I can pull this layer up and move it somewhere else. So maybe I'll move it like right after the train. I notice I have one blank frame there, so I'll extend it. And maybe I'll end this uh, video with the chameleon. So right at the end, I'll have the chameleon doing its thing again. So now that I've got the chameleon at the beginning and the chameleon at the end, it's making me think that this whole video is about this chameleon. And now I'm just starting to think about the sequence of images that I have. What does one image mean when it's when it comes after or before the next image? And what am I trying to say here? I don't know. This is kind of an abstract thing. And I'm just improvising going forward.